All right, so today I'm gonna to be testing out three tool sets. These are sets that are very popular and are potentially the first set that you should buy if you're buying a gouge set, right? If you're trying to uh, transition from using just a knife and uh, wanting to move to a different tool set, these are the most common sets you might hear about, at least in my world, I have experience with one, but we're gonna get into the review of them. We're gonna, of course, test them out and see which comes the sharpest. Two of the sets are reportedly not uh, sharpened, uh, and so that's gonna set them back, right? And so it's a little bit of an unfair comparison, but regardless, let's get into it. All right, this video is sponsored by Woodcarving Illustrated. And I wanted to say quickly that this magazine has been with me uh, since I was a little kid. Uh, this is not just a paid sponsor. This is a, uh, a real relationship that I have had with this magazine. Um, since probably what, age 12 or 13. And uh, it's a great resource for instructional material. Uh, they have great content, bios on great carvers, and just a lot of entertaining stuff. If you're into carving uh, like I am, then it's a really fun subscription to have. I know getting the magazine, even back when I was a child, was just such a huge excitement that to, to have some content coming to your house uh, on a seasonal basis. So check that out in the link below. And if you use the link code CARVER, C-A-R-V-E-R, -E they will send you some free goodies, uh, tips and tricks, stuff like that, step-by-step -step articles. One of them is mine, another is Catherine Overcash's. So check that out. Let's get to the video. All right, let's do a little unboxing and see how these tools feel in the hand. So first we've got FlexCut, and I like this slide open box. It's all wood. For that price point, that's like a really, that's a nice touch. Um, and I should say, I think I said it before, if I didn't though, bears repeating, I did uh, not get paid by any of these companies to do this review. Um, so that's that. Uh, anyway, I like the overall size of the flex cut. You know, it's a pretty typical full size tool. I'm not sure about this notch. I mean, maybe it's a familiarity issue. I've grown up with octagonal, just straight European style handles without any grooves. Uh, but this is a little different and it remains to be seen if that's something that I'll enjoy or if it's something that'll distract me. Uh, but it seems like a nice solid ash handle. The tool is firmly planted via the tang into the wood and I like that it has this steel collar. That's a really nice touch to prevent the tool from uh, splitting the handle. So the construction seems to be pretty good. It's definitely a thinner steel which is interesting. It's obviously some sort of a pressed steel as opposed to a, a forged steel. Um, you uh, manufacturing people out there or metal workers will know a better term for this. I believe it's stamped. I'm not exactly sure. But either way, it looks like a thin steel stock has been pressed into a shape. Definitely heat treated, which is good. And FlexCut's been known to have good steel in them. So I'm expecting good things from this. I'm hoping at least for good things from the FlexCut. So the overall feel of the tool is nice. The tool set includes a 60 degree 3 8 inch or 9 millimeter V tool a number 11 quarter inch or six millimeter vayner, a number 10, which is also a vayner, this is a 14 mil or 9 16 inch tool, a number seven, seven 16 or 11 millimeter, a number five, this is a uh, 11 16 17 millimeter, and finally, a number three at one inch. Now, I'm a big fan of the selection that they've got here. The only thing I'd like to add to this, if not one other thing in addition, is a smaller vayner, like say a two millimeter vayner. The vayner that they've included here is six millimeters, and I would like to have an additional thinner vayner in there, maybe say to replace the number seven. That's just my personal preference, but otherwise the selection is pretty good. The 60 degree V is good. Uh, it's kind of nice to have a 70 degree V. It's a little more versatile of a tool, but this will be fine for most relief carvers. And so very happy with the tools that they do include in the set. So that's a good, a good one uh, right there from the outside looking in. Who knows how it actually is. But the Stubai set, we'll do that next. I'm most familiar with because I use these tools almost every day, right? These are tools that I enjoy using. It's a traditional octagonal handle. It's a lot like the uh, Swiss made in that it's um, you know, uh, uh, drop forged steel. It's an old company. They've been around for a hundred years hand making these tools. Um, but they like, they have a little bit of, you know, interesting things to them. like the, the, the tools are not always set as firmly into the handle. And some people like that. I've heard people argue on here that sometimes they like to change out the handles and with Stubai, they can do that. It hasn't been a problem for me. It doesn't seem to come out when I'm carving, uh, it seems sturdy, 
But yeah, that is a thing that you have to note about the Austrian ones is sometimes the handles are looser than others. So whether that's a make it or break it thing for you, I don't know. But the tools included in this um, are as follows. This is a one inch number four. We've got a six millimeter uh, number. Uh, uh, it's actually a, a, a 70 degree V tool, if I'm not mistaken. We've got a number nine that I believe is a three quarter inch. And we've got a, a four millimeter, I believe, uh, Vayner, which I like the smaller size. And then finally, a six millimeter number nine. Uh, so those are really great. I like, I handpicked these tools because I like them best for um, carving faces. So this is a set that, you know, of course, I'm biased. I decidedly made this set. So uh, as far as picked out which ones I like. So that's great. Um, not much else to say about these, uh, except for they don't come super sharp uh, out the box. And so I'm giving these an unfair advantage because I did sharpen them for a class. I didn't intend on sharpening them for this video, but I had a class and I had to sharpen the tools. So we're going to weigh that against the tools when comparing them against the shaft and the flex cut, right? We're gonna account for the fact that we did sharpen them as much as we can. Uh, I'm not just glossing over the fact that I did a sharpening job on them. Granted, a fairly quick one because I had to do quite a few of these sets before students came by. So that said, um, the shaft uh, set of wood carving tools is massive. I mean, it's like 12 tools and I haven't actually looked through them all yet, so I'm excited to kind of give you a first take on what they look like. Okay, we've got the tool roll. Yeah, okay, so these are very similar to the Swiss made and Stew by, yeah, they got this weird like plastic wax covering, like a, almost like a combination between wax and oily plastic. It's strange, but that's nice, I guess, to protect the edge. And uh, one note from the, uh, from the owner, because I talked to him about making this video and he sent me this tool set. Again, I'm not getting paid to make this tool video, but he said that these tools are not technically sharpened. Uh, but what I read online is some folks are having trouble with the sharpen tools and prefer the, the manufactured sharpen tool. So we're going to test that out. Um, you know, his claim is that if you want to spend the extra money, you're going to get a better tool. I don't have experience getting those tools, <clears throat> but uh, the idea is they sell a sharpen set for a little bit more. And these are not those. So based on the description, let's see, is there a description here? I'm going to look for one. Uh, yeah, I think it's on the internet. So here are the tools in this set. Let's see. Oh, it's not it's not described here. Oh, there it is. Okay, we've got a, a number five, I believe a 20 millimeter. We've got a, I'm guessing it's uh, the, there it is. Okay, a number one straight chisel, eight millimeter, a number one skew chisel, eight mil. We've got a number five gouge, eight mil, a number five gouge again at 20, another number seven, two number sevens actually at six and 14 millimeters, a number seven bent gouge at 20 millimeters, a number eight gouge, actually two of them, one a spoon at four, one, uh, 10 millimeter rather, and then one gouge, uh, number eight at four mil. The number nine gouges in the set as well as a, nine, a 10 millimeter. There's a number 11 Vayner and there's a, uh, a V parting tool, six millimeter, and they call that a number 12. So I'm not sure the profile of that. Let's see what that looks like. Um, let's see. V-tool, V-tool, V-tool. I'm always curious about the V-tool because it's a really nice, yeah, it's an important tool to have for uh, beginning carvers. Okay, there it is. There's the V-tool. Well, is that it or is this it? Actually, interestingly, neither of these really look like V-tools. Well, maybe it's just this plastic distorting the view. Okay, so what I'm seeing here is a very soft V. That's interesting. That's the 12.6, yeah, that's the V tool. Okay, it's a soft U. It's not a sharp U, can you see that? I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I wanna have the option of both. Um, interesting, okay, well. Yeah, and, and the Vayner looks fine. This is that smaller, what, six mil Vayner. I'm glad they have that in the mix. Uh, yeah, I'd like to see maybe a smaller Vayner. Let's see, do they have a no, no, that's fine. That's fine. That'll do. Okay, we've got a couple different sizes of Vayners. I mean, it's a fairly complete set. They could have gotten away with putting a wider number uh, three in there, something flat for clearing. It looks like the largest clearing tool is this number five 20 millimeter, which is fine. But uh, anyway, let's move on to the test. Enough about the aesthetics of these tools. 
Well, I guess I should say, it seems like these are pretty firmly secured in the handles. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, okay, I am able to pull them out. So again, not necessarily a bad thing. There's no steel collar, and so it's just driven into the tools, sort of in the same way that the Stubai are. Although the Stubai, they're driven into the, the tool. Let me pull this out again. Uh, with a steel collar at the base, so it seems to be a little bit extra, a little bit of extra security there. Whereas the shaft, yeah, I mean, obviously you're paying a fraction of the price, so you're not going to get the same uh, build quality. Um, but let's test these out. Feels pretty firm in the handle, otherwise. Um, unless you're really yanking on the, the, the tool, it's not going to come apart. Okay, so at risk of giving an unfair advantage to the tool that I sharpened, I'm going to start by comparing the shaft out the box with the uh, flex cut out of the box. Now these are the closest in size that I could find in shape. And so I'm going to, uh, actually I lied. These two are the closest in size and shape. I forgot this one existed. So let's start with that. The number, uh, let's see, I believe that's a seven. Uh, let me look here. Yeah, that's a, oh, it's a number five. Okay, the 17 millimeter number five is uh, flex cut here, of course, just so we're clear. Ooh, that's got a nice zip to it. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we're going cross grain. Let's go with the grain. Yep. Pretty decent. And it looks like the grind angle is fairly, um, fairly good. It looks like there's maybe, I don't know, I'm going to say like a 15 degree or so grind angle. So good for softer woods, not, not so great for harder woods, but you can get away with using this on harder woods, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, this is really surprisingly sharp. That's great. Um, just out the box. So again, these are the shaft. These are supposedly not sharpened, but we're going to test this one out. Okay. So obviously this needs some work. That's really tearing. Let's see if we can get a closer shot. Okay. You can see the, the way the shaft tool is behaving. It's really um, kind of tearing the fibers a little bit more than it's cutting them. So that's a bad sign for the shaft out the box, but um, I will do some sharpening here uh, on the shaft just to bring it on par with this Dubai and see how it holds an edge. Might, just for kicks, let's see how this Dubai goes. This is after a few days of use, after it's been uh, sharpened by myself. Yeah, I mean, the Dubai obviously is great. It's, it's cutting well. Cleanly, a nice grind angle, because I did the grind angle myself on that, so that's probably about the same, maybe a 15 to 20 degree grind angle. But yeah, I mean, again, uh, there's a bit of unfairness here, granted, I'm going to try and bring these tools up to par with one another, but, you know, interestingly enough, uh, the flex cut doesn't seem to need to be sharpened. It's really, really nice out of the box. I mean, impressively nice. Wow. Okay, okay. Um, shaft is quaking in its boots. Let me take this shaft to the polisher, the grinder here, and do a couple of things. I'll take you through how I do that. Okay, first things first, I've got my work sharp uh, sharpening system, and uh, I'm going to use aggressive grit. This is a 120, I believe. Um, you know, it might be okay. It might actually be fine just to move right to the finer, the, the 220 on that. Let's try that. 320, I'm sorry, this is a 320 grit. So I'm rocking the tool and I'm trying to maintain an even bevel as I'm spending even time across the whole thing. Okay. Uh, looks okay. I'm going to then bring the tool over to the polisher. Okay, I've done some more polishing on this, about yeah, 30 more seconds of polishing, and let's just see how this cuts now. Oh, much better. Yeah, still not quite as cleanly well, no, that's actually pretty good. Pretty good. I think the grind angle could be adjusted a little bit on this one. And that's probably accounting for why it's a little harder to, to push through the material. 
because uh, again, it's probably closer to, I didn't know if, I don't know if I said this, but 20 degrees probably is my guess on this one. Whereas it looks like the flex cut is a little bit thinner of a blade. In other words, that grind angle is a little bit longer. Um, and then in addition to that, you know, I've, I've already, as I said, ground down the stew by to my desired angle. So, um, so the stew by is pretty good, needless to say. It's a thicker steel as well though. Um, on the uh, shaft. The shaft is a much thicker steel. Look at the profile of these tools. This is shaft right here on my hand. Shaft, stew by. And with a shaft down at the bottom, look at the th difference in thickness. Okay, now look at the difference in thickness between the third. This is flex cut. Totally thinner, right? And so the edge is going to go to flex cut in terms of sliding through the wood because it's just a thinner. Um, thinner piece of steel and so uh, you know of course the grind angle does make a big difference as well it's not just about the thinness of the steel right if, uh, if the grind angle was more aggressive it wouldn't be as good okay so um, I'm gonna spend a little bit more time working on this shaft and see if I can't get it up to par with the others because I feel like I need to do it due diligence or else um, you know I don't feel like I can say anything about it all right, so I've given this tool one last polish. If it doesn't cut now, I don't know that it will. Okay, yeah, now that's really, really nice. Nice clean cuts. You can see there's a polish on the wood here from the, from the tool. Let's see if I can get a better shot. Okay, so that's the path of the shaft once it's been polished properly. Really quite decent. Now the question is, will it hold up after uh, a bit of carving? So I'm gonna go ahead and run this through its paces for a few minutes. Okay, we've done some polishing of the V-tool on the shaft. And it seems to be doing quite a bit better now. Oh, we made it through the wood. Yeah, the base of that U is a little, it's still not quite there. I'm gonna take a little bit more time to polish. All right, we'll try it again. Okay, better. Still not quite clean enough. And the flex cut V-tool. Once again, just for comparison here. Okay, definitely a little cleaner. Uh, let's go into some veiner testing. Do a couple of quick passes with the veiners. The flex cut is doing a great job. Tools very sharp out the box and it's pretty consistent with these tools. Uh, and let's do a, the equivalent size in shaft. A little bit. Okay, this one's the sharpest of those out of the box. It's still not cutting super cleanly, but it's moving through the material. Can you see the the issues with the grain? It's a little bit choppy. Not quite. These are the passes right here. So not amazing, but usable. All right. A conclusion. The Austrian Maker, while it's probably the best in terms of steel quality and overall durability it's not fully sharpened. So as a beginner starting out in carving, if you're going to buy a set, you can save a little money and you can also get something that's razor sharp out of the box. Now, unless you can find a stew by set that comes pre-sharpened, I would go with the flex cut. That's my first choice. Now, the stew by is a close second because it requires a lot of work to get it sharp, but once it is sharp, it's more durable than the flex cut, at least it seems that way from years of experience with those tools. And it's also uh, probably a better steel, it's a harder steel, it tends to hold an edge I think a little bit better, and it's just overall a nice beefy European style handle. So that being said, Chef, while in last place here, 
is not anything to scoff at because if you're in a very specific category of needing a very basic budget set that gives you a lot of different options, right? A lot of different types of tools to explore and play with and you have a willingness to sharpen, Chef is not a bad choice. So I will link uh, the tools in the description below and if you have any questions, uh, I'd love to, for you to ask them down below. I'll, I'll try to get to them. I know in the last video I had trouble responding to everyone, but uh, yeah, check it out. And uh, without any more blabbing, uh, I just wanted to thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, check out Woodcarving Illustrated as well as my online school for carving to learn more about carving realistic portraiture. All right, see you guys and take your vitamins.